Good morning all. Uh, quite a while ago I bought a couple of these. They're the LM3915 Audio Level Meter uh, DIY Kits. So this is a chip that measures uh, a voltage on its input and lights up 10 LEDs. There are eight yellow ones and two red ones in here. Uh, according to a logarithmic response, so it's quite sensitive at the bottom end and then it's compressed. I think that's the top end actually. It's compressed as you get uh, more towards the top end. And that's useful for indicating audio levels. So what I thought I'd do is uh, build one of these kits pretty much as it was intended. I might lay the LEDs out in a slightly different arrangement. Um, and then also while I'm doing that, look at the data sheet and also look at the vocoder project because that's why I bought these because the vocoder uses two of these uh, bar graph circuits for PPMs, peak program meters. So they show you the peak level of the incoming audio signal and that's to ensure that you don't overload uh, other parts of the circuits which would of course then go into distortion. So here's the uh, metal front panel of the vocoder. Now there's immediately a problem and that is that the LEDs are spaced too far apart to fit in the cutout that I cut in this panel. So I'm going to mount these side on uh, in a sort of strange way so that I can try and compress them all into this space. Uh, it's going to be a bit tricky, but that's what I'm going to do. But I'm not going to vary uh, or deviate from the circuit of this thing. I'm going to build it exactly as intended and then try and feed in an audio signal, probably from my PC, and see if we can get the LED uh, bouncing up and down. Now, the first issue is which way around do these LEDs go? Well, they're marked uh, positive on one end, and then there's the sort of vague hint of an arrow pointing this way. So if we bring in uh, a block diagram from the data sheet of the LM3915, we can see the uh, LED pointing that way. So uh, positive looks like it indicates the sort of most positive side of these LEDs. And in fact, if we flip the board over, we can see that the uh, positives are all commons together on this line there. And the uh, pointy end of the diodes, so the cathodes, are all rooted into the pins of the chip. So certainly that looks the right way around. And uh, positive on the LED is the long leg. If I put that on the positive of this coin cell, that lights up just fine. Now you can see from the photo on this eBay listing, they haven't mounted the uh, LEDs sort of uh, sticking up. They've mounted them bent over and sticking out of the side of the board. And that would suit me but I'm not going to mount them quite like that. I'm going to change the orientation so that these LEDs aren't end on. I'm going to change it so that they're flat on. Uh, just having a look at the price here, I found this one Cent Smart, $1.67 free shipping. And they refer to it as a funny 10 audio level indicator DIY kit. Don't quite see why it's funny myself. So I've bent the legs like that and then I'm going to bend this one down and this one up, uh, cut them and then mount it either side of the board. So just uh, warming up the soldering iron today using the yellow sponge with the hole in the shape of a fish and of course I'll also be using my uh, brass whatever it is thing which I've put some uh, 50p coins in to weigh it down a bit. They'll probably get covered in solder but uh, yeah I'm going to use a combination of sponge and the brass shavings today. So let's solder this LED on here and uh, then take a look at its positioning on the board. Okay so what I've done is I've mounted it uh, sort of straddling both sides of the PCB and I've set it uh, ever so slightly um, centered away from its uh, nominal position. So I'll put another one next to it. And then as I do each one, I need to slightly angle them in so that I create a line of LEDs that doesn't extend the full length of this PCB. I hope that's gonna work. So I think you can see from this what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just trying to move these LEDs uh, slightly closer to each other. The bars are across rather than end on end. And I'm hoping to end up with a total bar length that will fit in the 
slot on my front panel. Um, now these two LEDs up here, D10 and D9, are red. So I've got to be careful not to get that wrong. And yellow down at the bottom end. And uh, this is the end result. Now I slightly miscalculated my wire lengths on a couple of the LEDs. So I just had to sort of bend them and uh, try and force them into position. But it's not too bad. They are all roughly equally spaced. And if I try and put them through the hole in my front panel, they do fit. So uh, yeah, that looks okay. I think I'm happy with that. Now, interestingly, although all the yellow LEDs are connected directly to the chip outputs, uh, the two red LEDs are not. They go through these two components, which are 1K resistors. So they've not current limited the uh, yellow LEDs because the chip itself has current limiting, but they've put 1K resistors in line with the red LEDs, presumably because they just felt that these were very bright and they wanted to reduce the brightness a bit. I don't know, it's a bit strange. So it actually says here in the uh, data sheet for the LM3915 that LED current drive is regulated and programmable, eliminating the need for current limiting resistors. So those two resistors on the red LEDs must just be a brightness matching uh, thing. So I have fitted those two 1K resistors because I'm going to be building this circuit uh, exactly as it's laid out. Now I need to find a circuit diagram of this as well. Uh, they do have one on some of the eBay listings, but not all of them. Uh, also, there's a 20K there, and that actually fits uh, down this little gap in the middle of the IC socket. So that's an interesting positional choice. Let's put that one in. Uh, so there's that 20K resistor, and then the socket fits over the top of it. But it does fit on with quite a click, and it does look like there's a ever so slight bow in it so it's an interesting place to put that resistor right the remaining resistors are 100 ohms 10 ohms 10k and this 560 they've actually supplied a, a 510 510 ohms uh, but i guess that won't make too much difference uh, the pot they don't show the orientation and of course it does matter which way round you have it because uh if you turn it clockwise, then the wiper is going to run to one end. And by reversing this, you reverse the end to which the wiper is going to run. So this does need to be the right way round for uh, clockwise increasing the uh, gain. Uh, now there is a picture from one of the eBay listings which shows the turny thing near the chip. So do I... Uh, trust that or do I find the circuit diagram and work it out for myself? I think the latter. Uh, both the capacitors supplied say 104. One of the capacitors on the board is marked C2104. This one is just marked C1 without a value but uh, I assume it's a 104. I'm going to shove it in. Right, this potentiometer, um, I've put it in the component tester. It's showing it as two resistors uh, which is fine, they're about 25k each and it's a 50k pot, that's good. Um, I've put the adjuster bit towards the chip, which is what the uh, photograph shows. So now I'm going to turn it clockwise and see which way the wiper goes. As if this thing didn't keep giving me messages about calibration. Um, okay, so let's turn that five turns clockwise, we'll have to run that again, presumably. Ah. Testing. Okay, so uh, the one to two resistor has got larger, the two to three resistor has got smaller, so the wiper clockwise is heading away from the adjuster knob. Good, that's worth knowing. Right, that's interesting. If uh, turning this clockwise is taking the wiper to the right, uh, the right hand side, then that's taking the wiper towards what is fairly obviously a ground area here. And that will of course uh, reduce the signal coming into the chip. And I want clockwise to increase it. So actually I think their photo is wrong. I think I want the adjuster away from the chip. Uh, right, that's it, that's finished. Now I'm pretty sure this uh, two pin link here 
is linked for bar mode and unlinked for dot mode. So I'll use it in dot mode first because uh, that will take that will draw less current. And uh, yeah, just need to get this hooked up, get an audio signal into it, get uh, I think they say 9 to 12 volts on ground and VCC and see if the uh, LED moves up and down this uh, little bar. Hmm. Right, let's do a quick test. I found this uh, cable already made up with a two pin JST, which happened to have the right polarity and a nine volt clip there. Uh, those look a bit dodgy, but uh, I think they're all right. Now on this uh, circuit that I cut out of the data sheet, we can see that signal in is pin five. So what I'm gonna do is just put my finger sort of on or near pin five. Let me moisten that finger. You can see that I can get the bar graph, it's in dot mode, as I said, uh, to shoot up the scale. Can't get it to go to 10. Let's dab my finger on that wet sponge. Oh yeah, there we are. I can get the bar to shoot up and go into the red area. So yeah, certainly that's working, but I want to uh, try and get some music in there through the audio connections. Uh, so that's what I'll do next. And uh, yes, I did get my pot the right way around because it's now fully clockwise and I've got a little bit more gain on there. It's in dot mode, but the dots do overlap. So um, I think the data sheet does say this. So you can get two on at the same time. But uh, yeah, I can get that up to about half scale. Let's touch the wet sponge again. Yeah, I can get it up to full scale with a wet finger on that input pin, pin five. So yeah, that's good. Now, if you're thinking this would make quite a good uh, voltmeter, well, it kind of would and it kind of wouldn't because the point about the LM3915 is that this scale is logarithmic and that's been achieved by having different resistors in this ladder for these 10 comparators. So 0.41K, 0.59, uh, 0.83, 1.17, 1.56, 2.34, 3.31, 4. Can't quite read that. 6.9 and 6.63K. Now the LM3914 is the linear version. Be quite uh, interesting to have a look at the resistor values in that version of the chip. So the LM3914 has 1K resistors all up this ladder. So these comparators will switch on at uh, constant voltage intervals all the way up. So that's a linear scale. And as we saw before, these resistors are all different. So this is the this is the LM3915 and this is a logarithmic scale. So what that means in practice, and I've got a little three volt coin cell here, which I'm attaching to the audio input because it's just a voltage measuring input. Let's uh, attach that. I've got the pot in a position where the LED is roughly halfway up the scale. Now if I turn it one full turn uh, anti-clockwise, which is there, you can see it shoots right off the bottom of the scale. So it's quite sensitive at this bottom end. Well, there's a bit of um, hysteresis in this pot. And if I turn it clockwise one full turn, then we don't even get up into the red. And I need to give it another full turn to get up to the top uh, red LED. So two turns to get it back to the middle and less than a single turn and it drops right off the bottom. So the point is it's very sensitive at this low end and uh, there's not much sensitivity up at this top end. You need to turn it a lot to get it to move one LED. That's the effect of the logarithmic scale. Now there's no DC blocking capacitor in the input of this circuit. In fact, uh, this input here just goes onto the pot and then straight into, I think it's pin five of the chip. I do need to get the circuit out so that we can have a look at that. But you can see that when I put a DC voltage into this thing, we get a completely stable uh, LED, which is held. There's no um, AC uh, or DC blocking AC pass through component to this. So what's gonna happen when I put an AC signal in? Well, actually what happens is as the positive half cycle comes up and down again, this will blip up. And when it goes to the negative half cycle, this LED won't show anything. The chip is tolerant of the negative going half cycle, but it doesn't actually display it. So this isn't really geared up for an AC waveform. It's not really geared up for audio. 
And there's a little piece here um, in the datasheet for the LM3915, which says uh, tips on rectifier circuits. The simplest way to display an AC signal using the LM3915 is to apply it right to pin 5, unrectified. Since the LED illuminated represents the instantaneous value of the AC waveform, one can readily discern both peak and average values of audio signals in this manner. Uh, the LM3915 will respond to positive half cycles only, but will not be damaged by signals up to plus or minus 35 volts. Now it says true average or peak detection requires rectification. And then it goes on in subsequent pages to show all sorts of application circuits to achieve that rectification. And uh, here are some of those rectification circuits. We've got a, a fairly simple half wave peak detector there and then a slightly more complex because it uses an op-amp precision half-wave rectifier. So this is only going to rectify the positive going half cycles of the audio signal. Uh, if you want a full wave uh, average detector, there's one here, precision full wave average detector. And down here there's a precision full wave peak detector and it starts looking quite complicated. Okay, so finally let's see uh, how it responds to an audio signal just simply fed into the input without any of this fancy rectification. So this is the output from my PC, which I've linked through to uh, the input to an active speaker. I'm powering the uh, VU meter from this battery and I've connected the wires a little bit uh, delicately into the PC output. I've adjusted the pot for nice full scale deflection. Let's play a little bit of music. This is called Hear the Noise. <laughs> to me. Um, and the other thing which I've noticed is that it appears to have gone into bar mode from dot mode. It actually hasn't. I'll just cut the music a minute. It actually hasn't gone into bar mode. It's still in dot mode, but because it's recording every single um, bit of every single positive half cycle, it's showing them all uh, at the same time. So it appears to be in bar mode. There's also a lot of flicker and you wouldn't get that if you used one of those rectifier circuits. It, firstly, it would be in dot mode and you'd either get the average level shown as a dot or the peak level shown as a dot. This is not very convincing. It's a bit of a mess. Let's uh, carry that music on. <laughs> So that's interesting. We'll cut here the noise. Um, as it stands, as the circuit is supplied, yes, it gives you a sort of audio representation or a representation of the audio level of the signal, but you can't have dot mode, even if you're in dot mode. It's very flickery. Um, and I think it's not very bright, partly because these LEDs are constantly switching on and off. Uh, yes, taking this forward, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that precision rectifier circuit. Why am I going to do that? Well, because the precision rectifier circuit is used in the ETI vocoder. And if you look at the precision rectifier cut out of the LM3915 datasheet and the circuit in the vocoder, it is identical component value for component value. The vocoder took this application for a precision full wave peak detector straight out of the LM3915 datasheet. And why not? This is the recommended circuit for precision full wave peak detection uh, for this particular IC. So yes, the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm feeding a bit of positive through into the input here, um, is build this precision uh, peak rectifier circuit so that this becomes a PPM, a peak program meter, and we can look at the peak level of an incoming audio signal uh, on this uh, bar graph thing in dot mode without all that nasty fuzz and um, that pseudo bar mode and with all the flicker, we should get a proper peak detect signal by adding that to the LM3915. But for the moment, uh, this circuit works and uh, kind of shows an audio level, it's good enough. Cheerio.